Hey everyone, so uh, this week we're taking a look at this little sequence I made with some battle droids from Star Wars, quickly breaking down some of the workflow I used as well as taking a look at the rendering. Um, this was a bit of a test really, as it's actually rendered entirely using Eevee, which is, isn't something I've really used properly before, so I wanted to experiment with that a bit and kind of figure out what it can do, what it can't do, and just see if it's something I could actually use for production renders and not just, you know, kind of look dev stuff. So this is our droid model. Um, it was actually a pretty simple modeling process. I didn't have to worry too much about topology as it's a hard surface model where all of the joints are rigid. Um, so we don't really have any geometry that's deforming. Um, there's nothing here that's too crazy modeling wise. I was able to block it all out just with basic shapes and then use the knife and bevel tools to just shape everything together. I only used the Boolean modifier once and that was to do the little cutouts for the eyes. So um, for the panelling on the head and on the chest area, I just duplicated the geometry, separated it off into its own object, added the solidify modifier and the bevel modifier, and then I just used the knife and vertex rip tools to create the gaps between the panels. Now for the rigging, I could have broken every moving part of the model off into its own object and then parented them all separately to different bones on the rig, but that would have made things a bit too complex when it comes to managing materials and uh, I knew I wanted to quickly and easily be able to change the textures on this guy between a few different variations. Um, so for that reason, I joined all of the objects into one single mesh and then I assigned the bones to empty vertex groups when I parented the model to the armature. I just manually selected bits of the mesh and assigned them to the groups. So that way we get our nice clean mechanical joints with no deformation or distortion but we've got everything contained within one mesh, which makes it really easy to deal with things later when you're swapping materials and that sort of thing. So for texturing, I use Substance Painter. I find this is a really fast way of quickly getting realistic weather and effects on objects. Um, you could do it in Blender with nodes, but for me that takes a lot longer. Um, I was super lazy on this and just used auto UV unwrapping, which you'd absolutely never do as it's super inefficient and often gets things horribly wrong. But for me, it actually worked out pretty well in the end. The UV layout is obviously just a terrible, horrible mess um, and you get a bunch of wasted space. So if you're making an asset for a game or something, you really want to do this by hand and lay everything out so that you're really maximizing the texture space that's available to you. I'm not too worried about any of that as I've got a decent amount of RAM and I'm not making a game so I could just compensate that by cranking up the resolution of the texture set in Substance. One thing you do have to worry about though is that in Substance having all these tiny UV islands can cause some really janky effects with the procedural textures and masks but thankfully on this one it didn't cause me too much trouble. But once again, absolutely do not do it like this. Auto unwrap is absolutely terrible and you only want to use it when you absolutely have to. The rig was pretty simple as really there's not a lot you can do with this guy aside from just basic limb motion. So to get the arms to hold the gun right I uh, parented the gun to one of the hand bones and then used a child of constraint on the opposite hand bone so that it stays connected to the gun. And then I had an IK constraint from that hand to the wrist bone so that the arm would follow suit. So when you're animating the gun you're really animating the right hand and then everything else just kind of follows along. It's a bit of a hacky way of doing it but it works fine for my needs here. I did run into some issues with the IK solver on the legs, which is probably my fault, but it might just be a limitation of the IK system. The legs would come sometimes snap backwards and with the constraints set so that the joints could only rotate along certain axes, the legs would sometimes pop out of the walk cycle and sink below the ground and I ended up having to fix this per frame in the animation by animating the pole targets around. I'm sure there's a better way of rigging this, but I tried a few methods and I didn't really want to have to re-rig it all again from the ground up, so I just kind of resorted to a brute force method, which worked out all right in the end. So then we come to the rendering. Um, I used instances of collections to make a bunch of duplicates of the guy, and I made a few duplicates of that collection with slight texture variations and the time of the walk cycle offset by a few frames, so everything's not too uniform and then I could just parent all of those duplicates to an empty and move them through the scene. The scene I made was really simple, just a few planes and cubes and PBR textures I grabbed from the internet, and I added a bit of a displacement modifier to the floor to give the cobblestones a bit of depth, and then I used a cloud texture to uh, make some reflected puddles on that. Like I mentioned earlier, I rendered this in Eevee, so I'll talk a little bit about that. 
Overall, I have to say I'm pretty impressed with it. Um, I wanted to try out how it would perform with a lot of assets overlapping each other and with a pretty hefty amount of depth of field. And overall, I'm pleased with how it came out. The depth of field here is a screen-based effect, so it's never going to be perfect, uh, but it did seem to perform pretty well, although I did spot a few issues where the background was significantly brighter than the foreground. You get this kind of weird light bleed effect, which isn't fantastic, but um, I don't think it's too big of a deal here, and there's probably some workarounds for avoiding it using render layers. So I found EV to produce much darker images than you get in cycles to the extent that I had to really push the strength of the HDR texture I was using. You don't get indirect lighting for free either, you have to bake it in and from what I can tell that's only a static bake so there's no way of animating it. So it probably works best to bake a big irradiance volume that fills your entire set just to get the broad indirect lighting on your characters but you're going to lose that lovely self-reflecting bounce light that we get in cycles without really having to do anything. It's a really subtle difference, but I think this is what really would stop me using EV for VFX or I'm integrating it with live action, along with the fact that we can't render out shadow captures with a transparent background. The other biggest issue I faced is that there's no object motion blur, which is something I only realised after I'd rendered. Um, and that's a really big issue for making things look photorealistic if you're using it for animation. You do get motion blur for camera movements, but it looks kind of a bit janky to me and has a lot of artifacts, which is a bit of a bummer to be honest. Now, uh, Dylan Neal has made a, a workaround for this by rendering the scene simultaneously in cycles and then pulling a vector pass out of that. Um, but I'm really not a fan of the results you get from vector blur, and if you want it to combine that with depth of field, you're going to get some pretty horrible results pretty fast, I think. So hopefully that's something they can add to EV in the near future, because right now it really holds you back from doing anything realistic in animation. The big thing in EV's favour though, and uh, the reason I think I'm going to use it a lot more, is the render speed. I was getting pretty insane render times for this stuff, considering the quality of the images you're getting. Um, the turntables of the droids you saw rendered out at about one second per frame, which is honestly pretty mental. And for the full scenes, I was getting between a minute and three minutes per frame. Now, to get anywhere near a usable image out of cycles, even accounting for using denoising, I was getting render times of 15 to 20 minutes per frame. So what that means is you can render out a shot in the space of minutes to hours, as opposed to overnight or over a few days, which is a really big deal for me. So a few people asked if I was gonna do a tutorial on this, and uh, I guess that's a good opportunity to talk about where I kind of want to take things with the channel. Um, this kind of modeling and uh, rendering stuff in Eevee aren't really things that I specialize in, so it's not something I really feel like I could do a tutorial on right now. Um, it was a bit of an experiment and an exploration on my part, and if I'd been recording it and doing a tutorial as I went along, it would have been a bit like the blind leading the blind, really, as there was a lot of trial and error and kind of tweaking things that went into this. Um, so I'm not going to be doing tutorials on things I'm not really confident in, or at least haven't tried out first. Um, so this sort of thing might be something I come back to at a later date, but I don't think it'd be right for me to kind of offer a tutorial on something and sort of claim I know what I'm doing when I'm just figuring it out for myself. So there will be things I do tutorials on in the future, um, but I don't want to be misleading anybody or, you know, kind of teaching people the wrong thing unknowingly. The other thing to mention is that if you want to check these models out for yourself and uh, maybe tear them apart and look how I put them together, um, then they're actually up on my Patreon now, which is something I've just set up. Um, so if you fancy supporting the channel, um, if you pledge $10 or more on there, you'll get access to download some of the models we use or making tutorials. Um, it's not going to be stuff that's up on my Turbo Squid, unfortunately, um, just because of my licensing agreement with them. Um, but for now, these uh, battle droids are up there with multiple texture variants and animated walk cycle and all that sort of thing. So if you do want to support the channel and uh, get some models to use for your own stuff, um, that's up there. And uh, any money I get from that is going to go straight into making better content on here. So paying for a capture card or render farms and things like that. So. Thanks very much again for watching and uh, I hope you enjoyed that and maybe found it useful in some way. Um, it was a lot of fun for me to try some new stuff out and get a look at what's possible with the new toys we've got to play with in Blender 2.8. So um, take care, keep rendering and uh, I'll see you in the next video.